when there are ways for everything why distress we should recall here an incident covered in part 1 nawab siddi mazud khan not giving credence to what divan venkanna had told him wanted to put sri raghavendra to test so he arranged for meat to be placed on a platter concealing it with a cloth and proffered it for the mool rama puja of sri raghavendra the pontiff sprinkled the customary holy water on it symbolic of offering it to the lord and when the cloth was removed the meat was found to have been transformed into fruits and flowers a crest fallen and consign stricken siddhi mazud khan then bowed in front of sri raghavendra in great obeisance seeking his pardon the swami to the astonishment of the repentant nawab never uttered anything that could have wounded him on the contrary he told divan venkarna look the meat offered by your nawab as per his religious custom has been accepted by sri moolarama in the manner of his choice yes with an evil intent when a sacrilegious thing had been offered sri raghavendra had caused it to be metamorphosed into items acceptable for puja such a merciful guru will not therefore utter anything in disapproval of what the devotees offer with unalloyed bhakti in part 2 there was an episode covered under the title more than chanting hymns steadfast devotion is supreme which also is relevant here a devotee without properly articulating the words appearing in sri appanna charyas sri raghavendra stotra was circumambulating the mantralaya brindavana chanting it with great bhakti at heart he was pronouncing the words raja chora as raja chora which a pandit there objected to pointing it out to be incorrect the next day the devotee was silently chanting the stotra to himself but on the third day the pandit himself paid his obeisance to the devotee and told him i could have darshan of sri rairu on account of you sri raghavendra appeared in my dream and said my devotee with great bhakti had uttered the words though unknowingly as raja chora that may connote the king being a thief since i have dedicated this his worshipful chanting to sri krishna don't prevent him henceforth from articulating the stotra which he is doing with utmost devotion sri raghavendra has thus taught us what sri krishna has proffered as lessons in the gita if in, if with whole hearted devotion even a small leaf or flower is offered in dedication it will be accepted by me says the lord and sri guru raja too follows the same in practice i have only this to offer please take this puja for puja and nivedya says a devotee and proffers mustard though it was an item precluded from being used in cooking during the ashada masa sri raghavendra appreciative of the devotee's supreme bhakti ordered the substance to be included in that day's cooking like this many other examples can be cited also when sri raghavendra was venkatanatha in his purvashrama life suffering abject poverty whatever little he had at home had once been stolen away by some thieves to console his wife saraswati who was upset by the loss sri raghavendra had soothingly said saraswati forget what has happened the persons who have made away with our things seem to be worse off than we so let those things be of use to them it is certainly improper to paint imaginary portrayals about one who was mercy personified as if he had proffered some advices that were totally at variance from his way of thinking and conduct who wants this milk abhisheka can abhisheka be done to my moolarama with this kind of milk it's sinful to even think of such a thing the embodiment of perfection that sri rama is can he be offered such shoddy milk
No, I shall not dedicate such a thing as an offering to him. You imbecile, who has told you that milk abhisheka should be done to earn his grace? Was the uncharitable way the imaginary things were portrayed as having emanated from Sri Raghavendra. One wonders how the author had the mind to present such deprecatory concepts just to drive home the message that pure cow's milk fresh from the udder of the animal should only be offered in dedication to the almighty the author has caused imagination to run riot and presented unacceptable things that are abu abused as being sri raghavendra's exhortations to a devotee in fact abhisheka is done with pure cow's milk only wherever available goshala is being established and developed now at several places and such centers fresh cow's milk only is used for abhisheka where it is not available what else can be done sri guru raja who could transform meat into fruits will certainly accept packaged milk and turn it into pure cow's milk that being the way he extends his mercy to his devotees and graces them for their wholehearted devotion after reading the article concerned a lady from salem had reportedly sought the author's permission to display a copy of it at every mart for the knowledge of the devotees yes it could have been done that way perhaps the author is not aware that at several mats a board is displayed that only flowers strung in varinar the fiber of plantain tree sheets will be accepted likewise even certain varieties of flowers are not accepted at the brindavanas the author has written bhakta you are committing a big mistake flowers bought from shops should not be offered to the almighty how can flowers strung in threads that too in unclean surroundings be dedicated to my moolarama as a sanyasi i don't need flowers and my lord shri rama does not accept such substandard flowers for whom are you then spending so much on flowers fragrant flowers strung in varinar and cleaned in pure water and sprinkled with shankodaka sanctified water kept in a conch shell in a devout manner there are prescribed procedures like this bhakta it is indeed surprising how the author had the inclination to write such non fragrant things devotees while buying flowers for sri guru raja will certainly avoid those that may not measure up to the pristine standard of purity and even the priests for that matter will issue the unacceptable lot the practices or adherence to the shastraic norms may no doubt vary a little at some places on that account we should not be befuddled in tirumala it is an age old tradition that flowers should not be worn by women for the reason that except lord venkatramana none should be sporting them in his divine presence by that token the same logic cannot be extended to preclude women from wearing flowers anywhere the author's standpoint on various issues is no different from this kind of a reasoning the observance of ekadashi fasting is not only enjoined upon in the shastras but scientifically also it has been proved to be conducive to healthy living it's not mere abstinence from intake of food or water that is to be adhered to on the ekadashi day but even our mind and concentration are to be attuned towards the almighty during such religious compliance on all the three days of sri raghavendra aradhana it is customary for five alankara brahmanas symbolic of the narayana aniruddha shankarshana pratyumna and vasudeva rupas of the lord to be deployed as divine emblems for invocatory worship and such persons are chosen only after proper screening of their acceptability for such role 
but the author in a vituperative outburst has visualized Sri Raghavendra as telling Bhakta all kind of Brahmins are made to sit as Alankara Brahmanas even if they be not doing the Sandhya Vandana nor observing the Ekadashi Vrata which is most certainly unpardonable. On account of this, the person accredited for such honor as also the one instrumental for that attract sin. Further, the article in question refers to such persons with scant regard for civility in making a mention about them. I can only sympathize with the author for such imprudence. Also, the author has imputed to Sri Raghavendra the view that even if Brahmins fulfilling all the requirements are chosen for Alankara, they are served food at about 2 or 3 p.m. only. And of what avail is it even if five special times of sweet were to be offered in veneration? It only kills the appetite of the person who consumes those and who attracts the sin that accrues from such insensitivity. A majority of the Alankara Pankti Brahmins have lamented to me about this condition prevalent these days. Still worse is the position in respect of the other devotees in large number who have to wait for the conclusion of the Alankara Pankti with empty stomach and an eager expectation of its finishing early. A perusal of these presentations welled my eyes with tears as the truth is that Sri Guru Raja will not permit any undeserving one sitting as an Alankara Brahmana. Such wrong portrayal tended to create the impression that those who could not afford for a meal were all attending the Aradhana and food alone was important for them. In fact, it is on the Aradhana day that from early in the morning, Abhisheka, Alankara, Lakshachana, religious discourses and rendering of songs, bhajans occupy the schedule till about 1 p.m. or 1.30 p.m. And there is nothing wrong in these customary observances. On special occasions like these, there is sumptuous food for the year too. During Aradhana celebrations, hunger takes only the back seat and it is only the devotional fervor that is given predominance. Besides, it has been projected in the writer that devotees cannot bear hunger even for a couple of hours, oblivious of the fact that on the Ekadashi day they observe fasting for the entire day. In fact, if Sri Guru Raja is meditated upon with bhakti, hunger will not be felt at all. Apart from imagining things, the author has said that those sitting for Alankara Pankti as also those assigning them the role reap sin in that process. How can it be said that such delays will have diabolical consequences? It's because of this kind of wrong messages carried to the public that I gave an indirect hint to the author in my Sri Vijayendra Vijayam serialized writing that such evil consequence will de devolve only on the author for writing blasphemous things. My intention was not to condemn the explication of Shastras, but to lay bare the fact that an alternate solution should also be suggested to the laity, which where strict observance of the scruples becomes impossible in the present day context. It is a pity that Wounding the feelings of devotees is portrayed as press ethics, whereas what I had said was denounced as being devoid of common sense and as a direct consequence of the evil influence of the Kalipurusha. Elsewhere, it has been said that the practice of late Tirtha Prasad, lunch on the Aradhana day, should change, and in the very next sentence, it is lamented that. The Granthas which our Guru had written with so much involvement and effort are lying uncared for even on the Aradhana day. Sri Guru Raja, it is mentioned, had said emphatically that what he expects on the Aradhana day, both in the morning and evening, is religious discourses and teaching of 
Vedic lessons, exposition of Granthas, which will make him feel happy on that occasion. It should be understood that an author should be should not present things in an um, unambiguous way, in an ambiguous way, bringing out paradoxical concepts one after the other. It's only because Upanyasa's exposition of Granthas, Abhisheka, and Aradhana occupy the forenoon session that. Tirtha Prasad gets delayed and surely without these ingredients there can be no Aradhana celebration at all. But at some places even on the Aradhana day things are finished within a specific time frame. Though on special occasions delay is unavoidable and pardonable too. Those who observe the religious formalities in a detailed manner should therefore continue doing so. And Sri Guru Raja will feel happy about it and grace everyone. The author has lastly said, as if Sri Raghavendra had enlightened it, that it could be vowed by devotees from this Aradhana to observe silence in the Brindavana precinct or otherwise be engaged in extolling the Lord and that Sri Guru Raja loves Aradhana being celebrated in such an ambience. These days, in most of the Mrithika Brindavanas, there is a Dhyana Mantapa or a secluded place for meditation. Devotees are making use of such facility wherever available. But on an occasion like the Aradhana, the coming together of family members and relatives at a common place and enjoying with a devotional fervor the religious celebrations is only to be experienced than read about. And this will certainly be appreciated by the noble-minded ones endowed with a lofty outlook. In fine, it is to be said that without being restrained by what is dinned by others, with the ominous portent of the evil to follow out of non-compliance with the scriptural can uh, canons, Sri Guru Raja is to be worshipped with pure bhakti. Thoughts about him always occupying our mind unwaveringly. And what the Shastras prescribe is that whatever is dedicated to the Almighty should be done with purity of heart and soulful devotion. Undoubtedly, such a deportment only is predominant even amongst the unorthodox ones in the society. Readers may think why I am dwelling so much on an article in a monthly that would have been spurned by most people. The justification for it is that none should be scared by its contents as to avoid things that have been portrayed therein as being in contravention with, of the Shastraic norms. If such things had been said in a religious talk, the matter would not have attracted much attention. But when it has come in print, it becomes necessary to refute those concepts. A question may be raised here as to why I have labored hard on propagating about the way Nama, Angaraka, Nakshata are to be sported and whether Sri Raghavendra would not be so merciful as to accept small deviations or flaws in the manner of applying those religious marks on one's person. Angaraka, Nakshata are the marks to be applied only after puja and naivedya. Sporting those marks during puja would tantamount to doing a puja after taking food. While worshipping Sri Raghavendra, religious symbols of one's following could be applied. But in a writing on him, there is no leverage for the author to deviate from what his preceptor, Sri Madhvacharya, has taught as the religious disciplines to be followed. Even in the observance of Shastras, certain minor modifications could be adopted to suit the circumstances. But history cannot certainly be altered that way. I therefore appeal to those who write about Shastras in the manner the author under reference has written on the subject that they should bear in mind the present day circumstances while portraying their importance. The Paramacharya of Kanchi was visiting places by Padayatra. But today many Pitatipatis travel by car, air, which cannot be found fault within the present day environment. 
we should only take the good aspect of it that is that they are able to visit more places and grace thousands of devotees carrying their benedictory messages to every nook and corner, corner of the country i would like to reiterate here that it is not my intention to eschew shastras they should be observed scrupulously wherever possible but where it is impracticable their adherence with some modifications to suit the relative circumstances is my clarion call to the devotees i have nothing personal against the author who has espoused such views as cited above and have great regard for that person who has been making continuous efforts towards the propagation of religious masterpieces like shri lakshmi shobhana and harikatha amritasara by holding parayanas group recitations at various places and teaching their import to the uninitiated lot i have been emphasizing in various contexts that shri guru raja should be could be soulfully worshiped by chanting the stotra poojaya raghavendraya or even the mere utterance of shri raghavendraya namaha in course of time efforts could be made to acquire better knowledge for more ardent worship thereby earning the grace of shri guru raja in a full measure sankalpa seva to shri raghavendra will enable the fulfillment of one's desires as he unfailingly graces the attainment of the goal if the submission is morally sustainable and is placed before him with utmost faith in him in fact for such soulful devotion he would even grace more than what is supplicated for and the incident that follows brings home this message as evidenced by the happenings in the life of a devout couple who are bestowed with a unique kind of a blessing that was far in excess of what they had prayed for but one that had also left them in perplexity an episode that will be thrilling to read and know about